put it so well, and Wakil has also really explained, mm. the opp opportunistic crimes. And I don't believe Kenyans are evil, Kenyans are criminal, or they're inclined to crime. Mm. So he's talked about the foundational issues that could be leading young people to crime. When we started Crime Sipo, it was out of the need to address that youth crime issue. We are a youth-centric organization that is a catalyst in the field of legal empowerment, crime prevention, and social justice. So the social justice aspect deals with the foundational issues that leads to crime. Is it breakout, break, um, dysfunctional families? Is it broken homes? Is it drugs and substance abuse? But then drugs and substance abuse now becomes um, a wellness mental health issue. Yeah. Because if I get addicted, then I need to support that habit. And so I'm not stealing because I'm a criminal. I'm stealing to support a health issue. Okay. So wellness now has become a core issue in crime prevention as well that we have to address. You'll find that people maybe who commit, uh, who are charged with committing murder, and maybe now in other offenses as well, they're taken for mental assessment mm. to find out if they're in the state to answer to that charge. But the, 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 the fact of whether in the, in the they were in the state when they committed the crime yeah. can only come at the time of the trial. Yeah. So there the mental wellness aspects as well. He's talked about poverty, he's talked about opportunities. Are we giving our young people equal opportunities? And then the second thing I want to talk about crime. Most times when we talk about crime, we talk about phone snatching. We talk about you know, assault, we talk about that, which are very bad crimes. But how come we don't talk about corruption at the same level? which could be causing all these other crimes. Mm. Because if I take one billion made for those young people, how many lives have I robbed? Mm. And so we should look at corruption, not as corruption, but let's call it a crime. Because when we mollycoddle and change names mm. and use different phrases, mm -hmm. people think this is a cooler crime. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to go do wash wash, it's easier to go do the other things, because I'll not be regarded as a criminal, I'll be regarded as a hero. Okay. And so it goes to the deep psyche of Kenyans on what we define crime to be mm -hmm. and why we should not stigmatize a, 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 a particular so social crime. Yeah. You know, I was in Embu prison this week, just yeah. this week, and I met two young girls, two young ladies. They told me something that broke my heart. They're employed as bar, as bar attendants in a club in Embu, mm -hmm. but there's been a trend. They say that the owner of that club, apparently, when he reaches end month before he pays you, he, charges you, he, he gets you to be charged with theft. Mm -hmm. Then you are taken to prison. Okay. Then another lady also comes at the end of the month, same charge, another lady, same charge. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a trend. So we found that it's a trend. And we met them in the same prison, mm -hmm. gone at different times, but surprisingly, all at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So if you tell me that anybody, everybody within the prison setup is a criminal, then it's become, a no, no, no. it's a no, no, no. I mean, yeah. there, there are nuances to this that we need to address right now. Mm -hmm. There are people using the criminal justice system to, to settle scores. You know, and we have to look at it holistically. Mm. So I want to congratulate the prisons department, I mean the prisons uh, uh, department in Kenya, which moved from, uh, which had a paradigm shift from punishment that was there before Uncle Modi's reforms yeah. and the late President Kibaki to now correction and, re and rehabilitation. So some of the things you're talking about right. earlier, where people are looking, um, when they go out, what are they going to do? What skill sets have they learned? Mm -hmm. The mood in the prisons department, the mood within the prisoners themselves, or the people in prison is very positive mm -hmm. because they accept whether wrongfully or rightfully convicted, the moment they find themselves in that space, they want to do something productive with their lives. Yeah, no, yes, yeah. Right now as we're talking, yeah. by the way, my sincere apologies and condolences to those who've lost their lives in this yeah, flood. Yeah, yeah, Some of the people are championing the support within the ghettos, like in Madare and all that, yes. and in Kibra, actually ex-prisoners. Mm -hmm. They have that heart, they are like, the community, the, the, the society could have judged them wrongly or could have judged them rightly, but they have that second chance and they want to make the most out of it. Right, and, and, and I mean, I probably would want to come back to that question later and just get to understand someone has stayed in prison for ages, for years. You know, they will tell you that I got here when I was this young, then I have this presidential pardon and I have to go out. I do not know where to begin. There are instances where some of them would actually say, I would rather stay behind. But legally speaking, why are you even talking about scenarios where whether charged rightfully or wrongfully? I mean, what does this speak to the, the, the criminal justice system generally looking at? Why would someone go and spend years in prison just because they were wrongly charged? No, I, I think my brother's touched on that, mm -hmm. a, a bit of that. And I think, you know, I think our justice system, 
And uh, as much as the police, I'll say sometimes they do a wonderful work. Yeah. And sometimes th those who are in prison, some, some of them are there rightfully. At the same time, you find that people use actually this same system